When you're going down the road of port forwarding and trying to get an open NAT type on the PlayStation 5, you're going to have to set up a static IP. Um, this is kind of confusing to the average person if you're not familiar with uh, networking in general, but it's not an overly complicated thing to do. And uh, this guy is going to show you exactly what you need to do to set a static IP on the PS5. So from the home menu, you need to go up and over to settings. From here, just click into network. Now, if you don't already know what your network information is, click into connection status and go down here to view connection status. And this will show you your current um, connection information, such as your gateway, everything you need to know is all in here. Now, if you do already know, nothing, no issues. Um, in order to set a static IP, you will need to configure things correctly on your router as well. But I'm assuming at this point you've already gotten that much done. And this guide is just going to show you the PlayStation 5 side of things. So once you're ready to set up static IP, just go from network into settings and then down to set up internet connection. Now, you'll already be connected probably, which in case I am to the wired LAN. So I'm going to go down here and go set up manually. Go use the LAN cable, but you can do use, use Wi-Fi. The process is the exact same for both. So I'll go in here. And in IP address settings, you want to change this to manual. And here we go. So our IPv4 is going to be, well, whatever you want it to be. So in most cases, it'll be 194.168. Maybe one, maybe two. Depends on your router manufacturer. This does change specifically to your network. So there is no general uh, value I can give you here. I know for my network, it's going to be 192.168.1. Whatever number you decide to apply a sign as your static IP. Um, I would recommend using a higher number, just say uh, 150. Um, that way, it's unlikely that any sort of DHCP is going to assign that IP address to a different device in your house. But you can reserve it through your router if you need to. Again, it gets more complicated when you do that, but that's all you have to do. Um, your subnet, subnet mask, you will have gotten that from the settings page if you don't already know what it is. Um, I think it should be 255.255.255 and maybe 1 at the end, I'm not quite sure. Um, but that will be, obviously again, based on your own network. It'll be given to you from the settings page that I showed you at the start. Default gateway will be the same, depends on your router manufacturer. It'll be 192.168.something.something, dot dot something, depending on your manufacturer. Um, your primary and secondary DNS, um, those will be given to you by your ISP. So the settings page I showed you again at the very start of this video will give you the correct IP for your primary DNS. If you don't really want to use your ISP's DNS, you can use 8.8.8.8. .8 and for your secondary, use 8.8.4.4. .4 .4. And that will give you Google's public ENS, which is usually quite quick. And in most cases, for a lot of people, uh, they'll want to use in general anyway. And uh, everything else, you can just leave it as it is. Once you input everything, you're done and dusted. This means that every time now the PlayStation 5 tries to connect to the internet, it will use this same IP address. Now, it's going to be up to you to ensure that nothing else in your home is using that same IP address. You can do that through your router and a guide to do that is going to be pretty hard to give in general because every single router has its own different OS, different interface, different settings, different way of doing things. You will have to look up the manufacturer of the particular router you have to get that much done. But again, assuming you've got all that easily done, everything should work quite smoothly as soon as you click done. And that's it. That's everything you need to do to set up a static IP on the PlayStation 5. Talk to you later.